How's it going guys? We're now in Season 7 of my NHL 17 Florida Panthers Franchise Mode Series. As you can see here, the NHL team has an overall rating of 95 offense, 94 defense, and 90 goaltending. AHL team there, 87 offense, which is pretty unreal for an AHL team. 83 defense and 80 goaltending. Um, last episode, a lot of people were asking for the relocation. Um, again, owner happiness, amazing, willing to relocate. Um, willingness, I should say, to relocate is some, so chances are... Oh shit, relocation accepted. Okay, so I don't know if that takes uh, takes place like next year or what, but um, apparently we're re relocating, so I did not expect that at all. Um, I think we could honestly win a Stanley Cup this year. That'd be pretty funny if we win a, won a Stanley Cup and then left. I think that's actually an achievement, so I uh, wouldn't mind doing that, but all right. Uh, didn't plan on that happening at all. Anyways, I'm going to show you the lines here. Um, pretty solid team. That's why I think we have a good chance of winning the Cup. First line there, Haynes, Barkov, Skinner. Second line, Hinnestroza. Bukestad, Huber Doe. Third line, Rutu, Smith, and Janik. Fourth line, Hodges, Masherin, and Patrick. A lot of people saying I should trade Patrick. He hasn't really panned out like he should, but he still has a lot of value. I'm uh, highly considering that if it, you know, will get us a really good player back. Defense here, we got Yossi and Ekblad on the top pair. Polka and Zadarov on the second, and then Reinhardt and uh, Masonuv, or Masonuv. I think he's a made-up guy. Um, yeah, he was drafted in 2020. Um, on the bottom pair, Goalies there, Fukali now in 88, our clear-cut starter, Sodstrom backing him up. HL team obviously is pretty stacked. Strom, Yoshi, I love the last name. And uh, Paris Hogan on the first line. We got Lance, Stahl, Blankfist, and O'Brien on the second. Enkfist, Poulin, and Methot on the third. Demore, Dube, and Holt on the fourth. Um, defense for the AHL team here is also very solid. We got Jake Bean, Brandon Carlo, Audi, Marchesu, Beagle, Champion, and Pete. And then in goal here, we have a couple 78s, or 78 and a 77 in Goldobin and McAmmon. So uh, both teams look poised to make pretty deep playoff runs this year. NHL team, honestly, could make a Stanley Cup run because not only are they stacked, we actually have, I think, six, seven million in salary cap space. So you can make like a huge addition at the deadline, especially if we're willing to trade uh, Nolan Patrick. So really surprised with that relocation. Like I said, I think it takes place next off season. So that's gonna be really interesting to see uh, what happens there, but we'll start with the uh, season sim and see how it works out. So I just finished simming through the first month, and as you can see, our NHL team is 4-3, and three. AHL team though is 5-0, and oh. and one thing I noticed too, uh, before the season started, I should say, before we asked to relocate, our fan happiness was 91, and it's now 82, so it dropped by 9. I remember hearing that if you do ask to relocate, your fan happiness will go down as you're leaving the city, so it makes sense. Also, we're only 4-3, and three. if we were like 7-0, and oh, it probably would have maybe not drop so much, but considering the fact we're just doing above average opposed to amazing, um, it's kind of interesting. So hopefully the happiness doesn't go down too much as I think we're going to be a really good team and I'd love to have like an awesome last year in Florida. As you guys can see here, we just passed our first owner goal for beating the Tampa Bay Lightning in our first meeting and it gave us a bonus 15k. And we only had three owner goals this year. Uh, one of them was obviously beating the Tampa Bay Lightning and the other two were winning the President's Trophy as well as the Stanley Cup. And as you guys can see here, I don't want to jinx it, but look at the record right now we have in November. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. Okay, it doesn't matter. There we go. So until that loss to Pittsburgh, we were undefeated for October. We went from 4-3 and three to like 17-3. and three. And of course, as soon as I started talking about it, we lose to Pittsburgh 4-2, to two, but we bounced back there with a couple more wins. Um, let's see if we got a win there against the Islanders. We did. So um, it'll stop there. Look at the month of November. Like, so starting, I guess, you can even start it here on the 30th and then go till the 3rd of December. We have one loss in five weeks. We're now 20 and four. Went from four and three to 20 and four. Like this is the best team I've ever seen. HL team though, they went from five and zero to 10, eight and one. So uh, they had a bit of a rougher month. And even though we lost one game the whole month, like we're just dominating, the fan happiness only went up by two, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. Even though at one point, while it was simming, it said it was said it was like 92. So I'm not sure if that was a glitch or if we just had a huge win or what it was, but whatever. So 40 points. I thought we'd actually be even more ahead than that. Uh, we're only only have seven points on Ottawa right now. But I mean, Buffalo and Tampa Bay both have wild cards and we're 15 points ahead of them. So I guess we are still way ahead of the pack. Uh, ratings, they look to be about the same. So probably no one's really injured. Um, hopefully we can keep this going. Like I said, if we can win a Stanley Cup in our last year at Florida, that'd be awesome. And I'm pretty sure it's an achievement too. Right here, guys, we're getting an interesting offer from the Chicago Blackhawks. They want McAmond. He's a prospect goaltender for their third round pick. So... Um, I might do this. I feel like we were pretty deep at the goalie prospects. 19, 66 overall. He was a fifth round pick, so I mean, we'd be getting two rounds higher, but obviously, uh, fringe starter goalie is pretty good for the fifth round. So, 
Just going to take a look here at our goalies, um, see where he ranks in terms of potential. So obviously, Bukali is a starter for the next at least five years. McAmmon then looks to be the best player. Actually, wow. Oh, wait, sorry. There's two different McAmmons. We have a 22-year-old, 78 overall with medium starter potential. And then this guy's got medium fringe starter potential. So I feel like this other McAmmon can make this McAmmon, that's so confusing, um, exposable. So let's actually do that deal. I mean, we got him for a fifth. We can trade him for a third. We have other good goalies. Um, I'm fine with that. So uh, just adding more picks for this year's draft. And as you guys can see here, we're now at the end of December, record of 27, 8, and 1. So not quite as dominant a month as November, but still pretty good. And as you can see, the fan happiness continues to drop, though. Now it's 75. So it looks like we have to pretty much win every single game of the month to keep it above an 80. Otherwise, uh, people don't care. They're still pissed off or leaving. But uh, we do have really good locker room chemistry there of 89. HL team, 18, 9, and 3 is also playing very well. So uh, I think this is probably the best case scenario. Uh, considering the fact that we are relocating. So now at the trade deadline, which is basically the halfway point of the season, we have a record of 31-14-2, AHL team there, 28-10-7. As you can see, the fan happiness rebounded big time, now at a 90, uh, which is pretty surprising. Like, we had a decent month for January, but still, uh, November was the best month probably, like, any team's ever had in hockey, and uh, our fan happiness was, like, a 75 or whatever at the end. Um, so stat central there. We are actually second place in the Atlantic, somehow behind Ottawa. Um, I'm trying to see. It looks like we do have similar games played. That's unreal that we're not first place in the division. Uh, before I look at those stats, though, I want to see which of our players made the All-Star game. I'm hoping Haynes made it. Uh, that'd be pretty sick. He's basically like, you know, our new franchise player. Connor McDavid, Eric Carlson, Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane. Aaron Eckblad made it. Maybe we have two guys again this year. Crosby, Galchenyak, Pareko, Petrangelo. Yossi also made it, so our top pair made it. Um, so I'm guessing if our top pair made it, Fukali made it. All right, maybe we had four guys. Our top pair D and our goalie made it. And so that's it. So Haynes didn't make it, but we still have three players, which is pretty cool. Um, like I was saying, I'm kind of, like, I'm not I'm not upset, but I can't believe we're not first place in our division. Uh, it's probably the same thing as last year. We're second in the division and the entire NHL, but I'll just check it here. Like, that's ridiculous. I can't believe Ottawa in front of us. Let's take a look here at the entire league standings. St. Louis geez 73 points they are crushing it we're actually in fourth behind them arizona and ottawa so even though we had that one insane month apparently the other three teams have just been as good as us which is pretty crazy really thought you know this year for sure was our stanley cup year but you never know what can happen in the playoffs um stats here haynes 49 and 47 so over a point per game hasn't grown at all since he hit the 90 but i mean for 22 years old being a 90 you can't complain barkov there 45 and 46 He's actually a 91 now. That's awesome. Skinner there, 43 and 47. So that first line is just dominating. Uh, Yossi, 37 points. Ekblad, 37 points. Um, as defenseman, that's awesome. Huberto at 32. Bukestad, 28. Smith, 28. Third line second. That's pretty good production. Hinestroza, 28. Polka, 20. Rutu, 19. This guy was like an 83, I think, uh, when we signed him, or at the beginning of the year. I think he was actually like a, he was an 82 or an 83 when we signed him. And I don't know what he's at the beginning of the year. He changes overall a bit. But he's now an 85. So this guy was an amazing signing. I think we have him, yeah, on a rookie deal there for three years. Um, great signing. Same goes for... Or, Janik's also on a pretty good contract. He's going to get a new deal, though, like Haynes. Uh, Master in there, solid fourth line center. Hodges. Um, Nolan Patrick, nine points, 47 games. He is being played on the fourth line, though. So I wouldn't say it's entirely his fault. But probably going to trade him. I feel like we just have so many guys passing him. For whatever reason, I think we just got like a bum Patrick. Like, um, if you guys don't know, sometimes, basically the way the potential works is you play them like first line AHL compared to say like scratching them in the AHL, that affects potential. Same with um, who they play with, as well as like if they're playing special teams and things like that. But there's also just like a dice roll to see how good the guy gets. So let's say you and somebody else both play McDavid, first line NHL, first line power play, play him with like two 99 wingers you might have a McDavid get to like a 92 where the other guy gets him to like a 99 and there's nothing you can do about it it's just kind of a dice rule so i feel like for whatever reason our patrick's just crap um fukali here 2.56 goals against not bad i guess 0.911 save percentage Sodstrom from actually 2.38 goals against 0.915 save percentage that's really good gonna take a look at the hl team now i guess we'll start off with the goalies we've had three goalies play uh mcammon's here 0.93 save percentage that's excellent less than two goals against 1.89 Goldobin, 2.31, 0.919. Uh, 
And then Savada, yeah, he's played one game. I don't even care what his stats are. Um, he's a third string goalie. So take a look here at the scores. Hopefully there's some uh, big time players. Stahl's now in 80, 43 points, 45 games. Yoshi's got 40. Strom's got 37, now in 82. Pool in there, 34. Methot, 32. Strom actually might have been 82 already. Uh, 81 or 82. Either way, though, he's a good year. Um, Enkfist, 27. Demore, 24. Benson, 22. He's looking like he's going to be a really solid third or fourth line guy for us. Uh, Blancfist, 21. The rest of these guys just kind of pitching in. So both teams are looking really good. Um, really not much more to say. Just got to hope. I think, no jinx in it, I think both teams are going to make the playoffs. And again, we just got to hope the simulation uh, works out for us. Right here, guys, we're getting another trade off. This one's from New Jersey. Our first and second in this year's draft for Adam Henrique. So I'll take a look at Henrique. I have seen him get really high overall before. Still not sure what I think about the deal, though. Like, our center depth's pretty solid. Uh, he's an 87, so a first and a second for an 87. I don't know. I think I'd rather add, like, a scoring winger. Um, we need that more than a center, I believe. So I think I'm going to say no, especially having to give up first-round pick. I like to keep my first-round picks if I can trade, like, other assets for them, like lower picks, prospects, things like that. So I'm going to say no for now. Trade deadline is approaching, though. Definitely going to make a, try, try and make a move. Uh, to make our team even better. So we're now at the trade deadline. We have a record of 38-21-2 AHL team there, 36-13-7. Fan happiness is actually still pretty high at 89. I'm going to see where we are in the division if we need another boost to beat Ottawa. And they're up 9 points on us. We have 78 points, 10 more than Toronto, who's in third. And Ottawa's got 87. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, so I guess we do have to try and make some trades, bring in even more talent, really make a run to the Stanley Cup. Yeah, like I said, we'd love to win it in our last year at Florida. Um, AHL teams first place in their division by a lot, 79 points, 14 there ahead of uh, Wilkes Bear Scranton. So, we're gonna try and make a couple of trades, maybe one big trade. We'll see what's out there. Um, hopefully, we can make a big splash though and uh, have a big playoff push. So, I was looking at the trading block, guys, and look who's available on the Washington block Alex Ovechkin, now an 85 overall, as he is 37 years old. Uh, one year left on his $9 million deal. I figured, look at the trade value there. If we can get them to keep like half his salary, as there is only one year left, so they're paying him $4.5 million for another month and a half. Who cares? Um, he could be a really good ad, actually, and maybe like a second line right winger to take Hinnestroza's spot. Hinnestroza moved down to like the third line, and would just give us a lot of depth. I think he's still probably got an awesome shot on him, and maybe, I don't know if he's won a cup yet or not. I think Washington actually might have won a cup, but. Even if, in case he hasn't, let's try and get him one more before he goes out. He's probably retiring after this, so let's see what it takes to get Ovechkin. So I was looking at what to trade for Ovechkin, guys, and I totally forgot how many picks we had in this draft. Look at this. We got a first, a second, four thirds, two fourths, two fifths, two sixths, and a seven. We have so many draft picks, and the only one they want is the first. I'm going to try and maybe bundle a bunch of these picks, as we don't need that many picks. Uh, we just trade away so many players to, like, clear cap and whatnot. Um, that's crazy, especially with how good of a team we have. We have this many picks, a stacked team, and cap space. Like, I think I'm like a GM of the year. As you guys can see, I actually added Nicholas Backstrom to the trade block as he's in really good center, 35 years old, 88 overall, uh, making $8 million, though for the next two years. So I have them retaining $2 million. So in case he regresses next year, we're only paying him 6 And obviously, he'd fill in really good on the second line center behind Barkov. Bukestad moved down to third. I don't want to pay Craig Smith $7.3 million to be our fourth line center. He's only one overall higher than Mashrin. So trading him back to Washington basically for the salary. Um, I'm also adding a first round pick. Didn't really want to, but it's like the one thing we have they really wanted. Dube's basically there for the roster spot. Um, he's our worst prospect. Fast is an unsigned prospect. We have a bunch of them. He's just basically ho hopefully going to push the trade over the edge. Same with that seventh round pick there. So Ovechkin, we're not retaining any salary on, but obviously one year left, it doesn't really matter. So we'll see if they say yes. Getting both the combo of Backstrom and Ovechkin hopefully is enough to win us the Stanley Cup. We'll see what they say here. Um, we have to move down Patrick and okay, we'd have to put Patrick on waivers, which isn't worth it So let's see if they'll retain a bit more salary Let's say on Ovechkin because he only has one year left and then try that deal again So I have Washington retaining 1 million on Ovechkin as Nolan Patrick's salary is 1 million So that should be enough to allow us to not have to send him down through waivers. So here we go We'll try it again uh, We'd only have to send down Audi Marchesu who doesn't have to go through waivers Which means they accepted it. So we get Backstrom and Ovechkin I think that one trade's enough. Hopefully it's enough for the Stanley Cup. So just look at our lines after that trade. Our team is stacked. First line, of course, is still Haynes, Barkov, Skinner. Second line, Huberdeau at right wing now with Backstrom and Ovechkin. That line hopefully will just tear it up. 
Third line is also very solid, Hinestroza, Bukestad, and Janik. And then the fourth line there even, Rutu, Mashrin, and Patrick can hopefully get some things done. Defense there hasn't changed at all, but Beagle's playing right now as, uh, what's his name? Our defenseman, Mason, Mason Nuve, whatever, um, is injured, but he's only injured for four more days. And the one weird thing is, too, O'Brien and Paris Hogan were both in the AHL, got called up. I tried sending them down as they don't have waiver eligibility, but it actually said it would make us go over the cap, which how sending down two players would make us go over the cap, I have no idea. Uh, but that's what it said. I'll show you guys, too, because it just made no sense to me. If anything, it would save us a little bit of money because they're on two-way deals, but... Um, let's see here. Sort by overall. I want to give these guys some playing time. So Brian, Paris Hogan, no waivers, and somehow we can't send them down. Like, as you can see, our cap space goes to 4.7, opposed to 2.9. I don't. I think it's maybe because of the injury. So when that guy's no longer injured, you're gonna try sending them down again. But just something really weird. I figured I'd share with you guys. But anyways, I'm uh, gonna continue the sim. About a month and a half left. Team there. 96 offense, 93 defense, 90 goaltending. They're going to tear it up, I hope. And right here, guys, I'm actually getting a trade off from Tampa Bay. Pretty interesting offer, offering me Scandella for a second and Numenin. And obviously, we do have that injury on D. Uh, Scandella would probably make our top six just perfect, as right now, um, f five of the six are 85 plus, just the one's an 81 or an 82. Scandella's an 84. He's got one year left here on a $3 million deal. They want a second, though, and Numenin. So I'm wondering um, if I'm giving them a second, I don't mind going all in on this year. Let's see if we can have them retain like 50% as there is only one year left and then do that deal. So as you guys can see here, I have them retain 50% of Scandella's salary. So hopefully we don't have to send anyone through waivers. And to uh, make up for that, I'm offering them Rose Hill, a prospect they want. Only bomb 6 four potential, not a big deal. Reichel is a goalie prospect. We're pretty good at young goalies here, so I can afford to give him up. We have a bunch of picks. We'll take a couple stabs at young goalies um, in the later rounds. And then a sixth round pick from Chicago, just again to hopefully make it go over the edge there and get this trade through the trade value is like double or triple on our side so we'll see what they say here and we have to move down beagle who doesn't go through waivers so perfect our team is stacked so we're now at the end of the season we finished with a record of 51 28 and 3 hl team there is 52 14 and 7 uh with a few games remaining you're gonna see if we're able to pass Ottawa or not probably not uh not quite 112 points for them we finished with 105. Look at the team stats. 96 offense, 94 defense. 84 goaltending is probably because uh, Fucali is backing up for whatever reason right now. HL team stats look to be about the same. Take a look at the standings. We'll see. Hopefully, maybe we finish second in the NHL. Um, 103 points. Like You got to think um, you're up there. Sorry, 105 points, actually. So let's take a look. Where are we? Third place with 105. Not too bad. St. Louis there beat us by one point. So if we can get past Ottawa again. I think we have a good chance here of winning it all. Take a look here at the scoring leaders. Uh, Haynes there, 63 points in 80 games. So he's out for a couple games. Barkov had 60. H uh, Haynes, though, had like, what was it, 47 and 45 before. So he really slowed down second half of the year for whatever reason. Ekblad, though, 59 as a defenseman. Backstrom has 58. Yossi, 55. Ovechkin still putting up numbers. 55 points. He's now in 83. He's dropped two overall, but I still don't mind that trade, that veteran presence. And the fact it's Ovechkin, who cares? Huberdeau there, 54. Skinner, 53. Uh, not the greatest year for him. He usually puts up about 60-plus. Bukestad, 46. Henestroza, 43. Janik, 35. Um, Ruchu's got 29. That guy really grew. Masher in there, 27. Polka, 27. Wait, Polka's an 87? Wow, that's unreal. He was like an 85, I think, like a year ago. Patrick's now an 82. We're probably trading him over the summer. Hodge is 83. He's got some points. Zadarov there. Played the whole year, 11 points. Just a stay-at-home defenseman. Scandell looks to be injured right now. Reinhardt there, Masanov, Paris Hogan, Beagle. Uh, those two guys, or all these guys at the bottom, are actually in the AHL now. Taking a look at the goalies here as well. Fukali has a .915 save percentage. Uh, What's his goals against? Taking a look at the goalies now, Fukali's got 2.5 goals against with a .915 save percentage. Sodstrom there, 2.12 against with a .926 save percentage. So he looks really good. Take a quick look at the AHL stats as well. McAmmon still killing it, 1.86 against, .93 save percentage. Even Goldobin, 2.01 against, .927 save percentage. So both teams are looking good. 
Again, I don't really care if the AHL team wins it all, but I want uh, Florida here to win a Stanley Cup before we leave. Stahl here, 65 points. Strom at 56. I'm glad to see both those guys going off. Yoshi at 55. Same with Poulin. Method 52. Angfist 42. Uh, Demore 40. Benson 39. So pretty good production there. This guy, uh, Audi Marchesu, 27 and 68 games. Not too bad for defensemen. So both teams are looking good. Just going to get into the playoffs now. And like I've said and many times before, just have to hope the Sim is kind to us and uh, lets us, you know, have some success. And I totally forgot one of our three owner goals was to win the President's Trophy. Unfortunately, we got third place, the 105 points. So, I mean, he can't be too mad at us, but we did fail. Hopefully, though, we can get the final owner goal, which is, of course, winning the Stanley Cup. So, first round here going against the Buffalo Sabres. Um, hopefully, Jack Eichel here doesn't spoil the party for our team. So, first game, of course, we are at home. Let's see what happens. Uh, Baptiste there gets a goal, makes it 1-0. Nothing in the second. Nylander and Rue to each score in the third. Unfortunately, not enough there. So we lost the first game 2-1. I swear, if we get knocked out first round with like probably the best team I've had so far in this franchise mode, I'm going to be very upset. But it's one game in. I can't get too negative yet. So second game here, if we can tie the series up, I'll be a lot more comfortable with it. First period, um, Eichel, O'Reilly, and Rutu. So rutu has got two goals in two games. This guy's killing it on the fourth line. Second period, Barkov scores. So does Hyman and Kane. So we're down by two. One period to go. There we go. Haynes and Ekblad tie it up. They're not going home yet. Overtime. And Reinhardt scores an, scores an OT. So down 2 nothing in the series. I can't believe that. Like, I don't know. Buffalo was nowhere near us. We were like, what was it, five points behind Ottawa at the end of it. And then after that, just like such a big drop us from us two teams. But what are you going to do? Game three here. Maybe we can uh, tie it up, get two back-to-back -back wins. That'd be huge. First period, O'Reilly scores. Nothing in the second. There we go. Yossi and Hange each score in the third period. Make it a 2-1 series. I was really worried there if we would have went down uh, three games to none. So we have a chance to tie it up. We need to tie it up. I'm serious right now. Uh, I'm going to quickly edit this scouting assignment here. We'll get back to the playoffs. So fourth game here. Need to tie this up. First period, let's go. Jeff Skinner, second period, nothing. Third period, there we go. Skinner, Reinhardt, Reinhardt, Patrick. They were determined to tie this game up. Uh, only had one goal lead, and they just went off. I love it. So back-to-back -back wins. Series is tied 2-2. We need to get this momentum to uh, keep going. Three games left. Let's win these next two. Not even go to a game seven. So here we go. Back home. Let's win one at home. As you know, the Florida fans were leaving. We lost our first two games at home. Here we go. Ocposo scores, nothing in the second. Kane, we can't win at home. It's like the Florida fans jinxed us or something because we're leaving. So hopefully we can tie it up 3-3 and then just pull out that game seven win. Uh, we need it like really bad. HL team there down 1-2 in their best of five. So uh, they have to win their next two games to stay in the playoffs. Here we go. This is do or die now. First period, nothing. Second period, you're kidding me. O'Reilly, Ulster, and Kane. Third period, we need three goals or more. Come on. Nicholas Packstrom, I can't believe that. Like, our team was so stacked. Like, that's just ridiculous. 95 offense, 94 defense. We had, like, 92 goal tenny when Fukali starts. Like, I don't know. That's just ridiculous. The team was so stacked. I, oh, my God. I'm, I'm actually pretty upset. Um, okay, we'll see what the HL team does here. I don't even care. I'm just so bummed. I thought this was our year to win the Stanley Cup. And, of course, it doesn't happen. The AHL team also loses first round. And they were first in their division, I believe. Let me go check the standings on that one. Um, actually, it's probably the playoff tree. But let's still take, check the standings. Because if both of our teams, like, actually went off. And they both went first round exits. I don't even know. Yeah, 114 points. AHL team wasn't even first in the division. They were probably first in the entire league. They were by almost 20 points first in the entire league. And they lose first round only winning one game. What a choke. Oh, that's just the sim. Sometimes screws you. So uh, we're, we're relocating. Florida fans didn't get a single playoff home win, which is hilarious. But uh, well, yeah, we'll just uh, continue simming. I have no idea when the relocation takes place, if it's before the draft, after the draft, after free agency or what. But uh, we'll find out here in a second. Also, guys, I totally forgot, but our GM contract is up. As you can see here, though, the owner is basically saying... Uh, we're an integral part of the organization, offering us $2.59 million for the next three years. Knows other teams will be looking at us, but hopes we resign with them. Obviously, I'm going to stay with Florida, the team I've been building for the past seven seasons. And it's going to be a new team now. It's not going to be the Florida Panthers anymore. So 
Uh, pretty excited to see what happens with that uh, moving forward. Like I was saying, I have no idea when relocation takes place, um, but that'll be pretty interesting to see um, how that all goes down. And right here, guys, look at the draft lottery results. Nashville, Montreal, there with the one and two. That's pretty funny. Subban, Weber deal. Uh -huh. It doesn't look to work out for either team seven years down the road. Detroit there with number three, still sucking. They also get the number 10, though, from Anaheim, so uh, good for them, I guess. I'm also going to see the retired players pretty soon. And right here, of course, is the Stanley Cup owner goal that we failed. He's upset with that, I'm sure, but I mean, I don't know what he wants. We had, like, one of the best teams ever. Uh, retired players here. Nobody on our team will take a look at the goalies. My bad. The goalies for the entire league. And then we'll take a look at all the players. I'm guessing Ovechkin probably retired. If not, I wouldn't mind keeping him maybe for, like, I don't know, a million dollars. Maybe not even that much. And Jonathan Quick here retiring. Ramo, Kudoba, and Lindback. So, basically Quick and a bunch of backups retiring. For the all skaters here, though, let's see what we get. Um, Phil Kessel retiring. There we go. Um, Eric Stahl now is 72. Kessel kept his rating pretty high there. 35 years old, 85 overall. Blake Wheeler retiring. Um, Shea Weber, James Neal, Hornfist, Latang. Pittsburgh taking a big hit there. Teddy Purcell, David Perron, uh, Anisimov, MacArthur, Versteeg, Vlasic, Edler. Some big names here. Uh, you got Franzen, Maroon, Downey, Petri. So, uh, is that Jamie Ben or oh, Jordy Ben? Okay. So, still some pretty big names retiring this year. Also, guys, we're now going to take a look at the awards for this year. As you can see there, the Ottawa Senators won the Stanley Cup. So, the one team this year that beat us out of our division title. Really not happy with Ottawa, even though they didn't beat us in the playoffs. Um, so, Ottawa won the Stanley Cup, President's Trophy. They also won Clarence S. Campbell there, the Oilers, and the Prince of Wales also went to Ottawa, of course. Player awards here, Patrick Kane with Derek Ross and the Hart. Carlson with the James Norris. Kane also got the Lady Bing, Pajo there with the Calder, Mrazek with the Con Smythe, forgot he's on Ottawa now, uh, Corpy Sala with the Vesna for Columbus, Halverson with the William N. Jennings, uh, Oleksiak, the Bill Masterson, McDavid with the Selkie, so he's so good now, he's even a Selkie Award winner, Kane with the Ted Lindsay, and then Kane with the Maurice Richard. How many awards did Kane get? Was that five? Yeah, Kane got five awards, that's nuts. HL teams here, so we get the award for regular season point champion, we get the award for best regular season finish in the Eastern Conference. Well, we get the award for winning our division. Uh, doesn't mean anything, though. We were first round exit. HL player awards. Uh, we didn't have a... S oh, Goldobin there with the... What is it? Presented the goaltender with the, to the team with the lowest goals against average. So, amazing uh, regular season for the HL team and a crappy, crappy playoffs. Also, guys, right here, look at the playoff tree. So, in the East, of course... Buffalo beat us 4-2, then Ottawa just barely beat them 4-3, best of 7. They swept the Rangers 4-0, they went on to beat the Oilers 4-2. Oilers beat the Coyotes 4-1, the Flames 4-3, and then the Avalanche 4-2. So, uh, pretty good playoffs there. Uh, still bummed that uh, we lost that, but what are you going to do? So we're out the draft, guys, and of course we don't have a first round pick. Um, I don't even think we actually have our second round picks. So we'll send to our first pick, as we do have a ton of picks, even though we don't have a first round or a second, I don't think. I think we traded the second for Scandella. Um, I may be wrong on that. We're about to find out here, though. The simulation is taking a while, so we probably did trade our second. It's simming through two rounds right now. Um, so yeah, our first pick is round three, pick number eight, which isn't too bad. Um, there's some top 60 there that went. Take a look at like the top five picks. We got an elite, elite, top nine forward. Detroit really messed up on that one. Elite, 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 top nine forward, top nine forward, top nine forward. So, I mean, yeah, Detroit uh, missed a few elite players there, but you're not going to get a solid pick every single time, I guess. They got an equivalent pick in the fifth pick of the third round, but uh, that's all right for them. So, anyway, guys, uh, first pick of a draft here for us. Um, exact top six D I see down here. Let's see what else we have. Uh, fringe starter goalies, bottom six forwards, seventh Ds. And for exact, uh, we have top six Ds, a top nine forward. I'm um, not supposed to go until the seventh round. This defenseman is supposed to go in the third round. Safest pick here. Let's make it. Parrish. And he's a top 60, so that's solid. Our next pick here is number 20 in the third round. Let's see if we can get another solid pick. Um, I'd like... There's another top 60 available. Let's just do it. Like, it's the safe pick. Might as well. Low top 60. That's still all right. Um, I forgot we actually have another third round pick. Pick number 23. I think we actually have four third round picks, uh, which is pretty crazy. So let's see here. A couple bomb six forwards. I think it's too early to take one of them. Um, let's go to the exact. We got another top 6D. He's not supposed to go until the 6th round, though. Top 9 forward till the 7th. 
we have so many like mid-round picks we could easily take them in like the fourth or fifth round don't have to reach right right now um so let's go projected here and just hope for the best on one of these players two guys left that are both third round highly interest we already have two defense and let's just go with this veros guy v veros um please be not ahl medium top nine that's solid and our final pick here in the third round so far so good i think uh, again probably just gonna hope for the best here as i think we get all those other players um in later rounds let's go um who do i like i like peterson i think medium hl top six forward please be good and low top nine it's not too bad now in the fourth round here we have pick number eight i'm probably gonna take one of those like exact guys uh, they're supposed to go later just to make sure no one else steals them from us um, obviously we are reaching but if we know this is how good they are it's worth the reach i think um it's actually for goalies what was available for goalies might want to take one of those now um there's a backup available and that's it actually so um probably not worth any goalies right now so yeah we'll just take those two guys make sure we get them before somebody else does um again like here uh low top 6d so that's not too bad at all for a fourth round pick and then pick number 23 here in the fourth round going to try and get that top nine forward who's projected seventh round but that's because i guess nobody else scouted him knows he's a top nine four potential hopefully low top nine still pretty solid now in the fifth round here uh, this is probably gonna start getting just basically lucky this guy's for sure bomb six we could find someone that's even better than that though do we want the safe pick i guess is really the question um backup goalie or like a few bomb six forwards i guess uh I guess we'll go with that bomb six guy. Was it Hentonen? Yeah, I'll just play it safe. I really don't want an AHL player. Medium bomb six. That's solid. Next pick here in the fifth round. We'll see what's available. Um, so far, honestly, I like our draft. Obviously, didn't get any crazy players, but um, some pretty solid ones. But right here, I think we're going to take a chance on this paling guy. I don't know why. Just unknown. Let's see what he is. Low top nine. I like that. Now, in the sixth round, I think we should probably take a goalie as we did trade one away probably use a couple goalie prospects but this bomb six forward here is probably going to go next let's take him actually i'll take a goalie with our next uh, sixth round pick just remembered we traded our second sixth round pick away so can't take a goalie but that's okay usually there's some pretty solid young goalies in free agency i thought we had a pretty solid draft i'm definitely happy with it uh no complaints so what i want to do next guys is actually ask you where we should relocate i actually had to ask the owner to relocate again i guess i waited too long but he said yes I uh, didn't bother showing that. Once he says yes, you can open up Relocation Overview, which is where you pick the city. So I want you guys to choose for me uh, what city we'll be going to. So for starters, here we have Atlanta, and you can see all the different stuff there, like market size, interest in your franchise, fan engagement, stadium funding interest, and then, of course, um, are they going to negotiate with us or not? So I'm going to slowly go through here and show you guys all the different cities, and I want you to actually vote on which city we should try and negotiate with. If it's a city, though, that's not willing to negotiate with us, I'm not even going to include them as we can't go there even if we wanted to. And I'm going to have like a straw pull up and you guys can vote which city we should go to. Personally, I think I'd like to go to either Quebec and like bring back the Nordiques or maybe go to Miami and just kind of move a couple hours away in a more populated city. But keep it the, I guess, keep it the Panthers, but make it like the Miami Panthers, don't even change the logo or anything like that. So a sort of relocation. And as you guys can see here, for instance, Las Vegas. No interest in our franchise, so even if we wanted to go there, we couldn't. Um, Markham, like I was saying, Miami, I think, could be really cool. Miami Panthers, keep the same logo and everything, but hopefully uh, just you know have more fans at the games as their market size is medium, and um, the current market size in our city, I'm not even actually sure where Florida plays, um, is small. So uh, anyways, Milwaukee, New Orleans, Oklahoma City, Portland, Quebec City, like I said, would be pretty cool there, uh, going there and making the Nord Nordiques again. Regina, Sacramento, Salt Lake, San Diego, no interest though, San Francisco, Saskatoon, bringing a team to Saskatoon might be interesting, Seattle, no interest though, um, and that's it. So again guys, I think I'm going to end the video there, I want you guys to tell me which city we should go to, and then as well, um, in the comp so vote which city we should go to, and then in the comments section let me know what our team name should be, so if you said voted for Miami, you should say Miami Panthers, if you voted for Quebec City, say Quebec City Nordiques, if you voted for Atlanta, say like the Atlanta... I don't even know. Um, 
soldiers or something like that so anyway guys i'm gonna end the video there and i think we're gonna have like a half episode where we just kind of do all the relocation stuff and then the next episode after that will be season eight so thank you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed it leave a thumbs up make sure to vote which city we should relocate to as well what our team name should be thanks for watching guys have a nice day goodbye